Something crazy happened in Gaza yesterday and the world is losing its collective mind. Here's how almost everyone is getting the story wrong, along with a tragic terror attack that happened in Samaria yesterday. I'm Ben, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome back to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Yesterday, there was an incident in Gaza, and no one knows what happened. Uh, the IDF is investigating. It looks like there might be some third-party investigations as well that might happen to this effect. But there's a narrative that's winding its way through all the major media platforms of the, of the world, including what are now considered major major media platforms of Twitter and TikTok and Instagram. Uh, they've become some of the biggest media outlets, a story for another time. But the narrative that's going around condenses to something like this. Uh, there were trucks entering Gaza, sanctioned by the IDF, or an IDF convoy entering Gaza. There was some type of scuffle with Palestinians trying to get aid for their starving children. The IDF panicked, opened fire on civilians, and massacred 100 Palestinian civilians. This is a narrative that's winding its way through media outlets. And like I said, we don't have all the details on what exactly happened, but we do have a lot of details from legitimate sources. And uh, a, a, a surprise, but the truth is very far from the narrative that's winding its way through media platforms. Um, so I, the IDF have been allowing aid into Gaza for pretty much the whole entire war. Hamas steals the aid on a regular basis, also a story for another time. This is somewhat routine. Um, this has been going on for a very long time. But the IDF uh, allowed a third-party convoy, I think an international convoy, of trucks into Gaza yesterday morning at 4-something in the morning of about 38 trucks, I think, from two different crossings, from the Rafah truck crossing and also from the Karen Shalom crossing. Um, these trucks, there are reports that I believe these were Palestinian drivers uh, that were driving the trucks, and it was not secured by the IDF. Most of the convoy was not secured by the IDF. It was just a convoy allowed into Gaza. They would go to to like supply depots, drop off the supplies, and then they'd get distributed to Palestinians via international organizations. The convoys were swarmed by thousands and thousands and thousands of Palestinians that tried to loot the trucks. We don't know exactly what happened, but there were several independent incidences here. Um, one of them is very well documented in this video provided by the Israeli military. Uh, just take a look at this right here. You can see thousands of people swarming these trucks here. This is this is insane. Um, and as the camera zooms out, there's just untold thousands and thousands of people swarming into these trucks. And the, the, the image just keeps going as this drone pans down the line of just thousands or tens of thousands of people swarming into these trucks. And uh, according to some sources, the drivers were Palestinian. That's what I'm hearing right now. And uh, uh, when people swarmed onto the trucks, some of the trucks, the drivers panicked and steered into the crowd and uh, ran over people. And so there were people run over by the trucks. There were people uh, trampled by other people. Also, there was gunfire in one of these first incidences. There was gunfire by unnamed Palestinian people, probably Hamas or another faction inside of that. Gunfire into the crowd, so we don't know what that was about exactly. There was a second incident that was independent from the one in this video here in El, El Nabusi Square, uh, close by, where there were also aid trucks coming in. Armed Palestinians fired on the trucks and stole the supplies. The IDF did not return fire in that incident. So it's possible in the first incident, there were a group of Hamas that were trying to, to you know, to hijack the trucks or whatever and take the supplies, like they've done so many times before. And a bunch of civilians got in the way of that and were murdered by Hamas. And then there was also a, a third incident where a large group of Palestinians descended on some of the trucks. There was an IDF uh, um, um, attachment nearby some of these trucks, and so they ordered um, this Palestinian group, to this large group of men, to stay where they were. They ignored the order. Uh, they kind of like charged on the, on the um, group of soldiers. The soldiers opened fire in the air. 
um, and the IDF kept, I mean, the, the Palestinians kept charging, and so the IDF unit actually pulled off because they didn't have orders for lethal engagement. They pulled off, retreated, and let these Palestinians take over the trucks, and so then there was, there was more of a trample um, that happened there. But according to some good sources as of this point, the IDF, contrary to reports, did not actually shoot anybody in any of these three incidences. So no Palestinians were shot by the IDF. We don't know how many Palestinians were injured or killed. The number from Hamas right now is about 100 or so, this massacre of 100 people. But as we've seen in the past, Hamas's numbers are no no way any universe any universe to be trusted whatsoever. Uh, Hamas has every incentive to inflate these numbers, so the numbers are more than likely much less. And the people died from being trampled by other Palestinians or run over by the trucks with Palestinian drivers that panicked due to the crowds descending or by Hamas shooting into the crowd. More details to follow, but the story that you're seeing in the media is very, very much wrong. The IDF takes no responsibility for this whatsoever. They were allowing third-party aid trucks into Gaza when this incident happens. Also, as a reminder, Another narrative that's being spun through the media, like I brought up at the beginning, is that the reason why the Palestinians swarm the trucks is because they're starving inside of Gaza. There may be people starving inside of Gaza. I don't know the situation in every single neighborhood in Gaza, but there's a lot of food in Gaza. There's no major mass food shortage in Gaza. Israel has facilitated a lot of aid trucks to come into Gaza over the last several months and also facilitated keeping bakeries running and setting up new bakeries to make sure bread is being distributed throughout Gaza. As of right now, there are 20 operational bakeries inside of Gaza providing 2.5 million um, bread rolls, pita bread per day. 2.5 million loaves of bread Per day inside of Gaza for the local population over the last two weeks, the number of operational bakeries has doubled due to Israeli fa- Israeli facilitation of those bakeries. So like I said, there may be people inside of Gaza that are starving. I don't know. I don't know every single neighborhood, every single situation. But as a whole, there is a lot of food inside of Gaza. There's no mass food shortage inside of Gaza. Israel is Israel's working very hard to make sure that that does not happen. More details to follow on this story, but be very careful what you read in the legacy media and also on the social media accounts. In just a minute, we're going to get into a tragic, tragic terrorist attack that just happened yesterday in Samaria. But first, would you like to have a better understanding of the book of Psalms and its beautiful original language? Meet Israel 365's The Israel Bible Book of Psalms, a Pray Like David edition. Imagine having the sacred Psalms in both Hebrew and English complemented by a rich feature a verse-by-verse English transliteration. A transliteration helps you decipher the Hebrew words in English, enabling you to understand every Hebrew word in the book of Psalms. But there's an additional layer of richness. The English translation in the Pray Like David edition closely mirrors the accuracy of the original text of Psalms. It stands as a very authentic and readable English translation of King David's prayers. Immersing yourself in the book of Psalms offers solace and strength to your heart and soul, especially when you delve into King David's original words in Hebrew. Our friends at Israel 365 are offering a generous discount on the Israel Bible book of Psalms, bringing your copy to just $24.99. That's nearly 40% off the original price of $39.99. Click the link in the description below to order your copy today and become part of this prayerful journey. As you delve into the Psalms, walking in the footsteps of King David, let's pray with renewed passion and understanding your prayers are needed now more than ever, shaping the future of the land of Israel. Tragically, yesterday, there were two Israelis who were murdered by two Palestinian terrorists at a gas station in Samaria, uh, right outside the community of Eli. Uh, this is the same place where last June there was also a terrorist attack in the Humas El restaurant right there next to the gas station, that same turnoff there. Um, one of the terrorists was killed. The second was wounded. The victims, the two men that were shot, um, was Rabbi Yitzhak Ziger, uh, who was 57 years old and a father of three. The other was Uriah Hartham, 16-year-old high school student, who had been hitching a ride with the rabbi. They were getting gas at the pump there at that gas station when the terrorists pulled up and opened fire and killed both of them. One of the terrorists was a Palestinian Authority off, uh, police officer who worked for Mahmoud Abbas. The um, owner of the Khumis El restaurant 
um, had just returned from active duty inside of Gaza. And uh, they actually captured a video on the security cameras of him taking out at least one of the terrorists. You can see from inside the gas station, they first hear the shots. And where the terrorists were standing is, uh, you know, not super close to the gas station, probably, um, you know, 50 yards out. So he goes outside, maybe thinking this was across the road. And you see the shots being directed at him coming through the wall above the door. So he retreats and takes some concealment by the door frame and takes out one of the terrorists very effectively. I believe the other one ran off and was wounded and captured very quickly afterwards. So thank God this owner of the Hummus Eliel restaurant was where he was and had the coolness and, and the, the calmness to uh, take out this terrorist in such an effective manner to show such great heroism and save the lives of whoever else was in the area. Thank God for that. Our hearts, our prayers are with the families um, in Samaria that have now been bereaved once again. We stand with Israel and the international community. All of us must stand uh, with Israel to clamp down on this terrorism, to declare sovereignty over Judea and Samaria, apply Israeli law, and to wipe out these barbaric butchers, the, the terrorists that would destroy um, the state of Israel, that would destroy Jews from living in the land of Judea, and uh, give a future to Palestinians that want to live alongside the state of Israel, give them an actual future of freedom from under the, the uh, tyranny of the Palestinian Authority. Don't forget to check out Israel 365's uh, Israel Bible Book of Psalms, Pray Like David edition. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel here on YouTube. Get the conversation going down below. I love interacting with you down in the comments when I get time. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Israel.